The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture. Conditions have been hot and dry in much of Western Canada this year, especially during this time leading into flowering in canola, leading to the question, should we spray for sclerotinia? And for this episode of the Canola School, we're joined by Nate Ort, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada, breaking down that decision whether or not to spray. Yeah, so there's there's two uh, big things to consider. And uh, so the first one is disease potential and the second one is yield potential. So we'll start with disease potential, and this is largely due to environment. So what has the environmental conditions on your farm been like? Has it mainly been hot and dry, or have you caught a few rains that maybe you're worried about disease pressure uh, in your field? Also, moving forward, what does the forecast look like for the next few days? Is there some rain forecasted uh, you, you know, while your canola might be uh, in flower? Um, and then, so the second one is yield potential. So what does your plant stand look like? Uh, were, you, uh, were you challenged with frost or flea beetles or dry conditions this spring? And maybe your canola fields don't really look as great as you'd like them to. Uh, so you, might, you may not want to invest more money into your canola fields, um, but you also may have a thin plant stand uh, and airflow can move through there and, and, and dry it out. We know that uh, you know, and we've recommended in the past to walk your fields and we continue to recommend to walk your fields always. But if you walk your fields in the morning and you come out, you know, with wet pants, uh, that means that the environment, you know, the microclimate, the environment within the crop uh, is, is probably uh, optimal for disease pressure. Um, but with a thinner stand, you'll get airflow going through the canopy and it may dry out and, and reduce disease pressure. So how do we know if that pathogen or that those apothecia bodies are present in our field or and at what level? Yeah, so that comes down to scouting. And and if you get on your hands and knees, you can find them on the ground and you can find them before the crop is at this stage as well. Uh, it also comes down to rotation. Sclerotinia uh, can affect uh, many crops, including sunflower, soybeans, dry beans, uh, any brassica, and also weeds. So what has your rotation been like in the past? Have you had a heavy sclerotinia infected field recently? Because that will result in more uh, apothecia for you know the next crop or, or the one after that. Okay, how do you recommend growers add all these different variables up and uh, and come up with the answer there's a lot of moving parts and it really doesn't help with the decision making process uh you know it definitely helps to ask around reach out to extension specialists reach out to your retails your agronomists your neighbors and and see what they're doing too um that can you know be ease of mind uh and there are some decision tools out there as well um but to keep those two main factors disease pressure and yield potential uh you know in in mind is is definitely uh, the most important and usually uh, when disease potential is high yield potential is high too because we have uh, you know the precipitation that the plant needs to grow and, and we have the environmental conditions that are that are really good for yield they're also good for disease <laughs> yeah that's where that saying in soybeans where that uses it's referring to the same pathogen mold makes gold right or something yeah. like that yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> cool well thanks for your time and your uh, your insight Nate no problem at all <laughs>